panspermia, panpsychism. Do you subscribe to either with the current evidence? And I go on to reply. I subscribe to both, but not to the extent I think one may be related to the other. So the only thing panspermia and panpsychism definitely have in common is the prefix pan, which in both cases just means trans or cross, as in panspermia, the cross-fertilization of planets by interstellar seeding of life forms or their elements via comets, asteroids, etc. And as in panpsychism, the a priori transcendence of mind over matter. Panspermia may be responsible for the origins of DNA-based life forms here on Earth insofar as an RNA-like alien virus may have crash-landed here during the Archeon period and begun arranging the single-cell heat-feeding complex carbohydrate molecules in the lava ducts there into the earliest microbes. There's certainly circumstantial evidence to speculate that the earliest eukaryotic cells, dating to at least 2.1 billion years ago, split from the existing forms of prokaryotic cells, to quote Wiki, by symbiogenesis between an anaerobic Asgard archaeon and an aerobic protobacterium, which formed the mitochondria. A second episode of symbiogenesis with the cyanobacterium created the plants with chloroplasts. The causes of these cases of symbiogenesis remain speculative. Panpsychism can be explained, in my estimation, Thus, the ego or central self-concept in the individual local mind is like a drop of water, and the universal mind or non-local cosmic consciousness is like an ocean that this ego dissolves into and dissipates in more the larger it expands its encompassing area. That is, the individual's mind may expand to include a vast amount of knowledge, but this will necessarily always be less than the ineffably infinite amount of knowledge that exists, or that let alone can exist. So although the individual mind may expand to some extent, it remains merely an isolated subset within the luminiferous ether field of hyperspace zero-point energy that extends beyond even the four-space shape of the space-time continuum itself. Insofar as this sub-quantum energy field is reflexive to the influence of the individual ego, it demonstrates that the local mind of the ego and the non-local mind of God at least share the same essential substance as a common medium between both. <laughs>